So thank you for so much for being with us today. Um, we'd like to begin with just opening remarks. So we're going to start, um, Ben Bastionari, we're going to start with you and then work our way down the table. You each will have three minutes to tell the voters of Pembroke who you are, why you're running, and why they should be voting with you. So, Ben, why don't you lead us off? Can I come up there? You can speak right from the table. Who am I? I'm a member of the community who has been an advisory member and a current DPW commissioner. I'm passionately against town manager, I'm against public safety override, and I'm against additional spending at this town meeting until we gain control of our current fiscal crisis. I'm a believer in the current system of government. If it's used properly, it works. For years, we've heard about money issues. We're there. It's not going to be easy nor painless to get through. In the last four years, we've had exponential increases in spending with no revenues to back it up. Abandoning the current form of government to place the same people in charge is not going to solve our situation. At the last selectmen's meeting, we were told that after the town manager passes, we will phase out all elected boards and erase the checks and balances. Your DPW will be abolished. Property taxes will go up. We can't allow this to happen. Our buildings and roads are just repair. We cannot budget, we cannot control spending, and we do not address issues. We simply form committees. This year's warrant is the worst accumulation of wants, needs, and wishes in 15 years. If you vote for an amended budget, you will agree to go to the ballot on Saturday and vote against or for a permanent override on the order of two to three hundred dollars per household. Mm -hmm. If you have, if you want to have the roads, police, and fire get money, then you must vote that article. However, if you don't vote that article, that money still goes into the permanent override. You still have to go on Saturday and vote for or against. How much more confusing can they make it? <laughs> we, we can't control our spending. Here's what we get for our tax money. We get the most number of municipal employees, the highest paid department heads, the highest paid town administrator, the highest trash collection costs, and the lowest enrollment per capita in, to colleges in the 20 surrounding towns. We have no direction and no planning, and we're told that a town manager is going to correct this. My selectmen are the town managers who have failed to protect the taxpayers. What we need is five sensible people willing to accept the challenges, take the actions needed, good or bad. I believe that my discipline, level-headedness, fiscal management, and municipal affairs experience qualifies me for the challenge. That's why I'm running for the board of select. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bastianelli. And um, just quick note, that was exactly two minutes and 59 seconds, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Mr. Brown, you're next. You. Approximately three minutes. Hello, my name is John Brown, candidate for Pembroke Select. To tell you a bit about myself, my family and I came up from Washington, D.C., where I worked in the first congressional member and for a nonprofit for 12 years. When my wife had an opportunity to come up to, come home to Massachusetts, uh, we took it and we moved to Pembroke, where I have been quite active in the community with groups, boards, such as the North Pembroke Elementary School Council, and the past three years being a member of the Town Advisory Board. These experiences here in Pembroke and the 12 years in DC have taught me a lot of what has to be done to help others here in town. The reason why I'm running for the Board of Selectmen is because I want to interject a different perspective to the board while looking for resources and solutions for our town's many upcoming issues. My top priorities are pursuing grant money on the state and federal levels, 
to grow small business in Pembroke. We're working with the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce and also reaching out to businesses such as Delft, Core Scope, and to Eva Pharmaceutical to see if they'd be willing to invest in our town. Well, I also want to have an active dialogue with corporate businesses in Pembroke so we can find how these corporate entities can help out our town. Uh, the corporate entities and other towns already do it. I also want to find the best solutions with my colleagues on the board when elected for our unfunded mandates of health insurance and retirement benefits. And to continue the process of going from a town administrator to town manager as long as the criteria is correct for town manager. I've heard rumblings going on about this education requirement not coming through. There are many other issues to discuss and very important to the financial future and well-being of Pembroke. I look forward to giving my point of view and with my opponents this evening. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Ms. Bird, you're next. Thank you. Thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, my name is Michelle Bird, and I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you a little bit about myself. I live in Pembroke with my husband, Rich, and our two kids, Courtney and Kyle. I actually live in the house that I grew up in. I bought it for my parents in 1991. I'm a third-generation resident, and I think that's why I'm so passionate about the town of Pembroke. Um, I have a long and proud history of community involvement that dates back to my childhood. I have both a legal and a business background. I worked as a paralegal in a law firm for many years before I entered the business world in 1994. Working in the law firm, I was held to a very high standard of honesty, integrity, fairness, professionalism, and confidentiality. And those are virtues that I instill in my everyday life still today. I was raised in a blue collar family and I'm a hardworking, self-employed businesswoman. I'm neither a Democrat or a Republican. I'm an independent and I have no special allegiance to any one political party or any group. I'm a former selectman, a former housing authority commissioner, I'm a member of the Pembroke Chamber of Commerce. I'm a volunteer and I'm also in the community center task force. I believe I re represent this entire community and I request your vote on me as well. All right, thank you Ms. Burt and Mr. Trabuco, your last. Hi, thank you for having me here today some very important issues before the, the face town of Pembroke today. Uh, I'm Dan Trabuco. I'm running for re-election to the Board of Selectmen. I've been a member of the Board of Selectmen for, for nine years. And prior to that, I was a member of the planning board in town for seven years. Uh, I've made it uh, my mission uh, as a board member to work not only with, with the board and the town administrator, but other boards, committees, commissions, and department heads in town. And I try to be uh, a level-headed force on the Board of Selectmen uh, by reaching out uh, reaching out and listening to various ideas to everyone everyone that comes before me and look at all sides of an issue uh, before I make a determination and I'd like to continue to do that so hopefully you can vote for me on May 12th you have two votes and I only ask for one all right thank you mr. Trabuco so we'll now be moving on to the questions portion of the debate. Uh, we'll be going in the same order, so starting farthest away from me and moving forward, and we'll be rotating so each candidate will have a turn to go first. Uh, you'll have approximately two minutes to answer each question. You do not need to use all of those two minutes if you don't need to. Um, if you have hit the two minute mark, I will do this. So once you hear that, you have about 30 seconds to wrap up. Um, if you do hit that 30 seconds, you'll hear me knock again, and then I'll cut you off after you're done with your next sentence. So the first question that we want to ask that the voters want to hear, as Pembroke's population continues to age, what will you do to make sure that our seniors are taken care of? And Mr. Brown, we're going to start with you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've heard uh, if this new community center comes up that there might be, they're trying to take away the field that's going uh, behind the community center itself. I don't really agree with that because I said there is housing that's available for seniors and with adding more 40B say for affordable housing for seniors in certain other areas even though you want close to the center of town so it's walkable uh, just doesn't seem like the right fit right now. Uh, we have other communities uh, that have been coming up uh, where seniors get to pay for it that actually make the town money. Now if it goes to a 40B we don't make out um, financially with, sorry, I we don't make it up financially uh, for the town's tax base. 
So if they helped out seniors, I'd like to keep them in their own homes if they're still here in Pembroke. That's the reason why I don't want the tax base going up on. You know, they, there are other programs that you can actually work with to make sure they can help out with the taxes or in lieu of taxes, which is great. But I'd rather keep them in their own home instead of sending them to a 40 feet housing. All right. Thank you, Mr. Brown. And Ms. Bird, what will you do to make sure our seniors are taken care of? Um, a lot of seniors can't afford to stay in their own home, um, and that's why they um, look for alternative housing. Um, I was a former Housing Authority Commissioner, and something that a lot of people don't realize is if you get approved to live in the, one of the complexes that we have in town, um, it's only a third of your income. So for an elderly person that maybe only has $900 a month coming in for income, you can live in one of the units um, in Pembroke Housing for only $300 a month. And that includes your heat and your lights. So we have a uh, demand of people that want to get in. It's over a two-year wait last time I checked. So um, I am on the Community Center Task Force with Dan, and we are trying to address the housing issue for the elderly. All right. Thank you, Ms. Burt. And Mr. Tribuco, what will you do to make sure that our seniors are taken care of? So obviously our senior population is growing as the, the baby boomer generation reaches uh, that point in their life. I mean, housing is an issue. Uh, as Michelle stated, the, the senior housing, the affordable housing that we have in town, uh, McDonald Way and, and the housing that's controlled by the housing authority are backed up. There's a backlog to them. So if a, a senior out the house outgrows the senior and it's too hard for them to maintain and they want a smaller house uh, or a smaller apartment it's hard for them to get in there because of the waiting list uh, and speaking to real estate agents in town uh, Pembroke does not have a lot of small one-story branches not enough to supplement uh, what the seniors would like so to move from a large house where you raise the family to a smaller house would be a great option but there aren't that many in town uh, so Part of the Community Center Task Force Committee's uh, vision for that area is not only the Community Center uh, for the recreation, but also to supplement uh, the Senior Center and have programs within the new facility, should we build it, but also as part of the program uh, to build housing behind the Community Center where the school is now. And that housing would be Pembroke Town controlled. Uh, we, we envision it as an over 55 for the people that we're speaking of, the seniors in town who, uh, whose houses have outgrown them. And we're just getting started on it. We haven't done any research on, on uh, the affordability of it or, or take, even taking the temperature of the town to see if the town wants that. But that's something that the, the community center committee is working on. And that's an innovation of thought that hasn't been thought of before uh, when people look at the community center. All right, thank you, Mr. Tribuco. And then finally, Mr. Bastianelli, what will you do to make sure that our seniors are taken care of? First and foremost, control taxes. Secondly, seek um, grants, funds, federal funds, anything that may be available to uh, the town to create or subsidize any kind of senior housing. And lastly, maybe the town would consider thinking outside the box and creating a senior program specific to the town of Pembroke that would help aid and assist seniors that are in need um, beyond the programs that we have already. I'm talking more on the level of housing, some sort of program. I, I don't have specifics in mind, but I think that we could come up with a model that who knows could catch on statewide, town by town, that as, as the senior population continues to grow. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bastianelli. Now, our next question, this is something that you've alluded to, um, all of you in some way or another, but many residents in town are upset with their property tax rates and believe that they should be lower. Now, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, do you have any ideas for new sources of revenue for the town outside of property taxes? And also, do you have any specific ideas for places in the town budget where we could perhaps cut uh, expenditures in order to save money? So we're going to begin. Ms. Burt, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Um, well, it's a misconception that our taxes are high. Our, ex our taxes are actually relatively low compared to some of the towns around us. Um, the same single-family home in, for example, the town of Halifax is going to cost you on your tax bill probably about another $200 a month. 
So I think right now we're doing a lot with a little. Um, and as far as generating um, more revenue, um, I know that there was talk about a hotel coming to um, near the off ramp for exit 13. And if we could um, do maybe a hotel tax, um, that might uh, generate additional revenue. And that was my idea. Wonderful, thank you. And Mr. Trabuco. Uh, so the Pembroke tax rate, the Pembroke average bill is $5,564. And of 20 towns that were surveyed, comparable towns in our area, uh, we're number 14. So our tax bills, dollar-wise, are not as high as, as, as most other communities. So we have, and I know that doesn't help a lot of people, and it's still high in your own sense, uh, but we are not high regionally. Uh, the Board of Selectmen have tried to uh, look out for extra other revenues. Uh, we have placed a solar field uh, at the former landfill, so that's one way we're, we're generating income. Uh, the, the mention of a hotel uh, uh, in the off-ramp, I work, I work in construction, and I know a family of hoteliers. They own many hotels, all the hotels on top of Wood Road and Braintree, and many hotels in Boston. And I asked uh, the primary investor of, of that company to come to Pembroke with me this past winter to tour uh, Corporate Park in, in that area. Uh, he looked at it and gave me the explanation that where Pembroke lies geographically, it's impossible for, for a hotel to make money in the winter time. They could probably make money in the summertime, but, but not in the winter time. They would just starve. Uh, and another part of that is Pembroke does not have sewage. We only have septic. So that's a deterrent also. So the, the main point of not bringing a hotel in that area is geographically. We have Rockland to the north, Plymouth to the south, and we're, we're stuck in the middle. But we have tried, we have attempted, we have reached out trying to look for new revenue sources. Uh, one other place we are going to get a revenue source, hopefully, is, is a health facility coming to Corporate Park. Uh, that health facility is uh, a nonprofit. They plan on purchasing the land, and as a nonprofit, they will not pay taxes. Uh, we want to partner with them for a pilot program to, to get uh, payment in lieu of taxes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Trabuco and Mr. Bastianelli. Eight years ago, I sat on advisory, and I had the luxury of going line item by line item, budget by budget. And at that time, there was a million dollars in money that could come out of the budget without affecting services or employment. That's one area. The second area is to, we, always, we like to compare ourselves to surrounding communities. We like to do our assessments based on what our neighbors do and how much they bring in and how much they tax their people. So we adjust our assessments of the properties in order to create that comparison and then use that comparison to say that we're, you know, in line with other communities. We need to be our own community. We need to look at our own properties. We need to assess things according to us and, and not worry about how do we get the numbers up. Lastly, if you're going to bring commercial businesses to Pembroke, we have a fairly decent location. We do have some um, drawbacks. And you either say to them, no taxes, two or three years, come in here, we'll accept you. Or you tax them. Payments in lieu of taxes in the private world, it's looked at, it feels like a shakedown. They'd rather pay the taxes than, than a payment in lieu of something. So give them a tax break. Just say two years, three years, five years, whatever, whatever makes sense, and get them in here. Because if they're long term and you give up three years and they're here for 20, you've gained 17 years. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Brown. Can you repeat the question, please? Absolutely. Um, so many residents have expressed dis dissatisfaction with their property tax rates. What would you say to those residents? And also, do you have any ideas for new sources of revenue for the town without raising property taxes? Or do you have any specific ideas 
for places to cut money out of the existing budget? Well, as you know, Pembroke is doing a lot with, with a little. And you say $63 million budget, what the hell, that can't be little. It's not because basically, unfortunately, our contracts are out of control. So we're paying so much for our services for these folks that unfortunately they're not paying enough in their health insurance benefits. So they're at 25% and other surrounding towns are paying 50. And going on for the retirement, you know, other towns are paying 25%. We're paying right now 15 and I don't know if actually the board actually voted on everyone going to 25 because that's a state law for going from 15 to 25, it's all or nothing. Now, the taxes themselves are good. The reason why my family moved here because compared to Duxbury, Kingston, even Marshfield, taxes were outrageous, but they also have other sources of revenue of businesses that are there that are paying their fair share. Now, the way to help out the people that are living in Pembroke, I believe the corporate entities that are here should be paying a corporate tax, which is higher and actually offset the taxes for the individual in town. Uh, besides that, you know, what I'm looking forward to help out with us is asking for more money for our legislature. We don't ask. And the stuff that we had going through the budget this year alone, we got one thing going through the House, $30,000 for housing. The other stuff for the ponds got denied by the legislature. And that's unacceptable. So we have to ask for more. Vinny DiMacito, our state senator, put $3 million in the Senate budget to help out, hopefully, if we're going to build a new fire and police station. So if, as long as we ask, they'll be able to put it in. Do we get denied or accepted? That's up to the legislature and how much that our legislative people are going to fight for us up on Beacon Hill. All right, thank you. Now for the next question, I want you to name what is one thing that you believe the current Board of Selectmen is doing well? And also what is one thing that the, the Board of Selectmen could be doing better? And Mr. Trabuco, we're going to start with you. So, that's a loaded question from someone sitting on, <laughs> sitting on the board. <laughs> um, I'll say, I'll, I'll talk about what, what I do. But I think, as, as a board member, I try to make sure that, that I, as a board member, reach out to, to all boards and committees and, and listen to to, to listen to all the ideas that they have and bring it forth in the board. Um, and I'll, I'll leave, these folks are going to have some fun with me, so I'm kinda, I'll keep mine a little short. And, uh, but what can, we, what can we do better? We can, we can do so much better. Um, and do so much better is uh, what I said in the beginning, communication. As much as I try and we try as a board, uh, communication uh, lacking. Um, sometimes, we think as a board that, that we are doing it, we are getting the information out, uh, the minutes are posted, uh, you know, our meetings are televised, but it's not enough. Uh, and I hear it, I hear it over and over, and uh, it's something that, that we should have fixed a long time ago, it's something we, we, we need to work on, uh, because we try to communicate, but, it, but it's not enough, because the word must not be going out, because uh, I do hear from, from the boards and committees that, that I speak to, they didn't, get, they didn't get information from Ed Thorne about this. They didn't get information from the Board of Selectmen about that. So uh, as much as we do work on it, there's so much room for improvement on communication. And that's one of the biggest things that, that I can work on and be effective in uh, if I try harder. Thank you. Mr. Bastianelli? What? I'd like to see my Board of Selectmen um, be more favorable to the taxpayers and to the citizens and to the people. And to create an environment when you walk in that room that you feel like you can go in there and have a healthy debate. And, and that's not the case. Even though they may think that because they're sitting behind the table and people are sitting out in front of them. But it's not a comfortable environment for most people. And I'd like to see them create a more inviting environment for a healthy debate and to not make people feel like they are being told what has been decided or what is going to happen and more 
informed of why they decided what the issue might be or what the direction may be. Um, as far as what they do well, I've done this before and I'll do it again, I pass. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Bastianelli. Mr. Brown? Thank you. Well, uh, like I said, being in town five years, I've been able to meet a lot of the Board of Selectmen, uh, former and uh, current ones right now. And they do talk to me and they, they do talk to others that are within the room willing to take that chance to go out and say, to be informed of what's going on. Some people don't, and they say communication is lacking. If communication is lacking personally, unfortunately I have to, I have to say that it's our town administrator that's doing it. Because I know that I've talked to him several times, especially when I asked about the community compact, and it took us over two years to get involved with it. And that it started in January of 2015, and I actually was on the board after that, after I lost my election the first time I ran. So communication, yes, that people want to be involved and do it. It is out there. I think they do a great job of communicating. It's just people want to be more involved to do so. But I'm concerned about the town administrator basically kind of falling to the side of not doing his job of going for grant money, waiting on uh, programs that, unfortunately, the lieutenant governor's office had to call us and say that, oh, do you mind being part of this community compact and us being 329, which we should have been 29. And another improvement I believe that we should be doing anyway is not spending free cash to pay our bills. Free cash is not there for that for that issue. It's for stuff that we want to buy for the police, the fire, DPW. And if we're doing this as of next year, we're supposed to be a million dollars in the hole. It's unacceptable. All right, thank you. And Ms. Burt. Um, I think what they do well is they work well as a team. They function together. They each bring a different skill set to the table. Um, and I think that they work cohesively and collaborate with one another and that they do a good job with that as a team, functioning as a team. Um, what could they do better? Um, it stinks when you go last because everyone's like, oh, she's just saying what everyone else is saying. But um, communication would be one focal point that could uh, be done better. Um, I think not so much amongst the boards and departments, but with the residents. I think some of the residents, for those who have shut off their Facebook, are um, feel disconnected from the Board of Selectmen. And one idea I have to correct that would be I want to have office hours before the Board of Selectmen meeting so that you could just walk in off the street at 6 or 6.30, whatever time it is, and just sit down and talk to me about what your issue is. And then I could bring forward your issue as a taxpayer to the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. All right, so our next question, this one is kind of fun. If you could wave a magic wand and get any one project done in the town of Pembroke, budget's not an issue, what big project would you do? Give you some time to think about that. And Mr. Bastianelli, whenever you're ready, go ahead. Eight years ago, 10 years ago, when I got involved in the town, there's a building that sits like a white elephant right in the center of our town. And if I could do anything and money wasn't an issue, that building would be gone. And there would be a nice center of town with police and fire and town hall all in one area, all nicely done, all presented to the street so that we have a presence of a town. And I think that, again, money not being an issue, behind it could be your rec center, your senior center, your community center. That whole thing could be a megaplex for Pembroke and, and really show the kind of town that this is. This is a rural community. It's a nice rural community, but it's rural. And we have to look at it as a rural community and we have to manage it and create it as the community that it is. We're not downtown anywhere. We're Pembroke out in the cranberry bogs of rural America. Great place 
That's what we need to create. Thank you. And Mr. Brown, we have a magic wand. What big project would you get accomplished? Well, the magic wand that basically is going through everything right now is uh, the, uh, the rec center. Honestly, uh, we had some place that was a focal point. I mean, I would like to redo the whole center of town myself and make it a, a huge campus. So basically, like I said, the rec center, the council of aging, everything is all in one. You know, having a pool so we can actually have a swim team, you know, would be phenomenal, so competitive, because sports are very important down here on the South Shore. I see my, my brother-in-law, he lives in Marshfield, and how Marshfield goes crazy on sports. But being proud about our town, we're titans. And I find it funny, well, basically getting this rec center done, or basically a complex of some sort, maybe a sports complex too, that we could actually get done for like pride for, the, since we went from a regional school to our own school system uh, years back, a rec center would just basically bring everything kind of together as one, like everyone's proud about the center of town for a rec center, so in a nutshell. Then I would probably do a new fire station up at the corner, 53 and 14. I think um, public safety trumps all else. Um, a new building in the center of town would be nice, but the chief has expressed that he's spending too much time going up and down Barker Street to get to the residents that live in North Pembroke. Um, the town purchased that land on the corner of 53 and 14. Um, the fire chief does not want to be in the center of town, and I think if I could wave a magic wand, um, giving light to the fact that we've had nine house fires this year, um, I would build a new firehouse. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Trebico. Well, I'm a pragmatist, so waving a magic wand uh, sounds like pie in the sky to me, but I will say that the, uh, my greatest wish is to have this, the community center uh, torn down and rebuilt into a brand new facility that in, in we already have a site plan for this if uh, if you look on the town website I believe it's on there already the town community center committee has this we've uh, we had an architect uh, through private funding no town spending was done on this an architect drew a rendering of a new facility that included a rec center uh, uh, facilities to for the for the seniors uh, combined facilities that that adjoins the library uh, and it's a it's a beautiful building that fits well in w with the architecture of the town, uh, and the town green is would be a wide town green, a town green that the Pembroke can can enjoy and be proud of, and also it would create foot traffic in Pembroke. Uh, we would love to have the center of town uh, a walking center, and uh, that would be the project that I would like to put forth. Thank you. All right, so the next question was submitted to us by a resident online. What would you do as a selectman to make Pembroke a more environmentally friendly community? And Mr. Brown, whenever you're ready, feel free to go ahead. Well, Pembroke does a great job, actually, environmentally. I mean, besides the solar fields, uh, I know that uh, one of our residents actually was able to get us a clean a green grant of $250,000 a couple of years back. So uh, we do a pretty good job of actually being green for our town. I mean, recently we just had the right to farm at uh, town meeting last year. So, I mean, we're, we're on the right track of being green in Pembroke. So, uh, we're actually pretty good, unless that person has other examples they're not sure about us being green. Leaving it intentionally vague. Okay. Thank you for your answer. Then, no, I think uh, we're doing a good job. All right. And Ms. Burt. Can you re repeat the question? Absolutely. So what would you do as a selectman to make Pembroke a more environmentally friendly community? Um, so one thing that we could do is get away from plastic bags and go to paper. I know a lot of towns have been doing that. Um, paper bags are biodegrad biodegradable um, and that would go in the recycling container and the plastic bags do take up a lot of space um, with regards to waste um, and I think it would just be more cost effective if we went to paper, we'd be hauling less trash because we'd be doing more recycling with the paper. Wonderful, thank you. And Mr. Shibuko. Uh, well, the Board of Selectmen have been working toward that end and uh, we, we've accomplished a, a pretty good goal uh, not that long ago by bringing curbs, curbside recycling to Pembroke uh, with our large toter bins that make it convenient for, for everyone to put the recycles all in one place, single stream, 
uh, it's it's easy for the re residents and our, our recycling percentages have showed it well, before we began the curbside recycling program uh, recycling percentages were around 15 percent and now we were 25 percent it, it, all the time it, which which is above and beyond uh, most communities thank you and then finally mr. Bastardelli on the environmental end I would say that my selectmen have done a good job with getting involved and pushing forward the large agendas. I think environmentally the town has done well. There are probably probably smaller agendas in which um, they, we could enhance our environmental footprint, um, namely maybe more solar power in places like um, um, the, water, uh, the water treatment plants or maybe even the high school roofs or something along that line. I think the big stuff has been covered. I think that, um, and I have the feel that this question is more directed at smaller items and probably more like the plastic bags, which I have a whole different opinion about. But um, I think they've done a good job at that and I think we could, we could enhance it in other areas, but I, I don't think we're gonna come up with a huge uh, environmental footprint. Wonderful, thank you. All right, the next question, what do you believe is the most important role that the Board of Selectmen plays for the people of the town of Pembroke? Um, and how are you uniquely qualified to perform that role? So Ms. Bird, I believe you're leading us off this one. Um, probably one of the most important roles is negotiating the contracts with the unions. And I would just say that um, as a full-time realtor, I negotiate contracts every day, and I'm constantly in a fire of uh, conflict. Um, and also, I think I'm uniquely, uniquely qualified because I was a former selectman. Thank you. And Mr. Chibuko? I think one of the most important things uh, selectmen can do is be leaders in policy making. Uh, by policy making, not only uh, acting on the bylaws that, that we have in town now, but looking forward to the future. And that's that's one of the things that uh, I had been working on in, in the town government study committee and the capital fund committees in town, looking for ways to, to improve uh, how to plan for capital spending on the capital funding uh, committee, uh, how to fund that, where we can fund that. And for the town government study committee, looking at our government, how can we change it? Uh, is it, is it working good now? Can it do better? And one of the things that committee came up with was uh, the idea of a town manager uh, so that we have a perfect, we're a $63 million budget, so it takes a CEO. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how can, the, how can the town run more like a business? Well, the only way a municipality can run like a business is to have a CEO. A town manager is just that. Thank you, Mr. Trabuco. Mr. Mastronelli? I think the single most important thing for the selectmen to do is be partial to the taxpayers in all their actions, in their policy setting, in their financial considerations, in doing business for the town. First and foremost, the consideration should be how does this affect the taxpayers? What's going to happen down the road? What are we involving them in? that they may or may not end up having to pay for and covering the taxpayers first and foremost. Secondly, operating as a town management government that we have for the last four years um, shows that uh, town manager is a failure. I mean, we have a financial crisis as a result of the way we've operated in the last four years and we've operated specifically as if we've had a town manager. So I, I can't give accolades to um, that sort of thing in terms of, of what they need to do to, to protect the public. Thank you. And Mr. Brown. Well, the important role of the selectmen is starting everything off. They're the hierarchy. They're the ones that basically are telling, okay, to our town administrator, this is what's what's our next step for whatever project it may be or policy and holding him accountable. 
Uh, in the past, unfortunately, I said our town administrator has been lacking with communication with other committees and other boards. And it's, like I said, it's unacceptable. But that is a, a major role. How am I uh, qualified for that? I try to communicate with everybody. I talk to anybody and everybody that's willing to listen to saying, we, we need you guys out in the town meeting to let you know that this is going on. Not when it's going to be happening that we might have an override or that, you know, it's important to have your vote to see what we can do to progress further for the town for the solutions that we need to get done right now. But the important role for selectmen, starting everything off and holding the town administrator accountable. Thank you. So another question that was submitted to us by a resident online, can you please describe one activity or committee that you've been involved with within the town? What has that meant to you? And how has it helped to shape or impact the town? And I believe Mr. Trabuco, we're gonna be starting with you. So I've spoken just recently about the, the Capital Fund Study Committee and uh, the Town Government Study Committee. So uh, having said that, I'll, I'll move on to another committee that I'm on. Uh, which is the Old Colony Planning Council. That's our that's Pembroke's Regional Planning Council. And I'm the delegate for the town in that. And those plan, that planning council uh, helps with uh, district local technical assistance uh, grants for the town so that we can research how to uh, attract business within town, uh, how to, uh, they do roadway studies for traffic studies, for uh, the, the center of lights, the center of town lights, for instance, which uh, we're we're trying to uh, retime. We also do uh, uh, truck exclusions that they help us with. They will they will perform the studies on the roadways like Lake Valley Street, High Street. I uh, recently had truck exclusions to help the residents uh, from the truck noise and truck traffic that have been going down there. Uh, so. That's, those are a couple of the, the things that we do at the Regional Planning Council, Old Colony Planning Council, uh, that I've been a part of for the last uh, six years or so. Thank you. And Mr. Bastianelli, one activity or committee that you've been involved with, what has it meant to you? How's it shaped the town? I've been a DPW commissioner for the last eight years, and along with fellow commissioners and others in the department, we have improved, as you can see happening, um, Route 14, Route 36 is going to be redone in the near future. As, as a water commissioner, we've purchased land to protect our water resources. We are in the process of developing additional wells on the Swanberg property to service the north side of town to bring more facilities up to the commercial area in town. We've controlled the costs of the water rates. We've developed a self-sufficient water department. The monies that's in there, there is plenty of debt service that's going to be retired shortly that will go back into there. There's no need to raise rates. That money's gonna be used to improve um, our water systems, when we've ripped up these roads that, that you have so graciously um, suffered with for the last year and a half, we went in and spent additional monies and made all the resident water service ties off the new main that's there with all upgraded pipe and gates and valves so that those residents have a complete new water system that'll last for the next 50 years. That's the kind of things that I've been involved in and it's been gratifying and it's been an experience that has given me municipal experience and I understand the municipal side and I want to be a selectman because I want to bring that to the board. Thank you. Mr. Brown? Uh, well, the committee that I've been on for the past three years has been advisory, and when I came on in, uh, I, I'm very glad that the folks accepted me uh, to the board because there's certain ideas I had in my own mind and been told that that sounds great, let's bring that forward, or that's against Mass General Law, you can't really do that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, you know, still asking the question either way. Uh, for actually activities that I've done for the past five years, I've been coaching uh, my son's baseball teams 
and it's been fun just basically being out there in the Mattakesa fields and basically how you see what Pembroke takes care of those fields so well and the PYB has done such a great job of putting it out there to get all these kids to play ball. But also for the past five years, I've also been at the Pembroke RTC, also its chairman for two years. And the one gratifying thing I have out of that one is the fuel systems fund. We've done it, we did it in the past, but then this past year, because of, the, of our committee uh, going forward, we raised over $4,000 for people that needed help with their fuel. And that was so gratifying to see that, that it was such a cold winter, or such a cold spring too, that people really needed that money and we were able to help out and seeing you seen the smiles on people's faces saying thank you very much for helping us out thank you for thinking about us and that's the reason why uh, I want to be your selectman I want to help I want to communicate and I want to further this town because I moved here for a reason thank you and then finally Ms. Bird five time I'm going to tell you about two committees one town and one um, nonprofit um, on the wa I'm on the water wheel committee, I'm passionate about the Herring Run Park because I've lived here for 51 years, and I think it's important. Um, we successfully secured $100,000 from Vinny DiMicito to do engineering and improvements to the Herring Run Park. Uh, it, it's currently with Div Division of Marine Fisheries. Then it'll go to conservation, and then uh, DEP. So hopefully we can update the Herring Run Park with much needed improvements. And then on a non-town level, um, I'm also an advocate for the Jet Foundation. As many of you know, I'm friends with Christine McSherry. Um, we raised $11 million in 11 years, and I'm proud to say we saved Jet's life. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So we will now be moving into an audience question and answer session. Uh, this will be divided into two separate portions. The first portion is questions if you'd like to ask for the entire panel to answer. And then once we've exhausted those or gone through a couple, I will move on if you have questions for any specific candidate. So I'm going to open it up. Does anyone have any questions that they want to ask for all the candidates? Just raise your hand. Come on, you're here for a reason. <laughs> no? All right, so opening up even further then, does anyone have any questions perhaps for a specific candidate or candidates? Can I do all the candidates? Absolutely. Mr. Strzok. All right. I, so I'm going to repeat that. So, uh, I'm just going to repeat that so we can pick it up on the camera. So Ms. Strzok's question was, what is your opinion on the town manager question? And um, I believe Mr. Dubuco kicked it off last time. So Mr. Bastianelli, we already know, but tell us your thoughts. Yeah, I, I, am, I am opposed to the town manager. Thank um, you. All right, and Mr. Brown. Um, for the town manager, as long as there's certain requirements that going into the warrant are actually held to the same standard and not brought down to a different level. I'm opposed to the town manager. Um, I think it's taking away from the voice of the residents. I feel as though they elect the selectmen and the DPW commissioners and the other elected official <coughs> officials. And with the town manager, it takes away some of the hierarchy. The town manager will, will be able to um, do some functions without consent of the board of selectmen. Um, my second concern is that a town manager um, receives a much greater salary than a town administrator, obviously, because they have more job duties, more functions. And where will those funds come from? Thank you. And then, Mr. Chibuko, your thoughts on town manager? I'm certainly for a town manager. The, the town of Pembroke is ready for a professional manager to, to manage the town. And I'd like to dispel a couple of myths that are, that are bandied about. It's very important for everyone to know that the town manager article does not eliminate any elected board planning, assessors, DPW, Water Commissioner, Board of Health. It was important to the committee that brought this forth that those all stayed intact. And those, and that is, that is how it is written. There's one little glitch about the DPW that town council has written an amendment that we're going to bring to town meeting floor to make sure that it's clear as day and there's no room for, no wiggle room. The DPW water commissioners are going to maintain their position, and that's important. That's important to, to the people in those departments, and it's important to the committee that's bringing this forth. And another thing that uh, people had questions on is the, the qualifications of a town manager. Uh, town council wrote the job description uh, with limited uh, pinpointed educational uh, background on it on, on purposefully because the committee that will research the town manager will be able to put 
qualifications on precisely the, the master's degree and educational and experience qualifications. That does not belong in a bylaw, that belongs in the search committee. And that's what town council has, has spoken to us about. Thank you. And then while we are on the subject of town meeting, um, just could everyone quickly say there's one other article that's going to get a lot of debate, and that is the Proposition 2.5 override. So beginning with Mr. Brown, could you just tell us what your thoughts are on the Prop 2.5 override? Well, <clears throat> my thoughts on the 2.5 override, yes, do the fire police need personnel? Yes, they do. Do the DPW need money? Yes, they do. My concern about the Prop 2.5 is the way we were spending in the first place if we were able to control health uh, health insurance at least on that end for 50 percent for the folks that actually have it that money that we were saving for pi paying the health insurance every year the fire and the police could have had their their personnel i saw the numbers for the dpw uh they need the money to do our roads uh, that's just bottom line on that so if it came to a vote uh, definitely with the DPW on this. Uh, right now, I'm for the need personnel, but not what we're trying to do uh, for over 700,000. If we're going to do an override, do an override, if that's the case. Do a, a big one that's going to take care of the whole town and everyone gets a piece, not just basically picking and choosing what we're going to do for year to year. Thank you. And Ms. Burt, your thoughts on the two and a half override? Um, I am in favor of the override. Um, I think it's a priority to most residents, public safety, police, fire, roads. Uh, we have 134 um, miles of road in Pembroke, and just to pave one mile costs $281,000. So it's an expensive endeavor. Um, hopefully this will get us a little bit ahead of the curve. Um, as far as police and fire, we're still running uh, two-thirds of the day. We're still running three cruises, which is where we were 30, 34 years ago. Um, and that the same with fire. Everyone heard the audio tape of the fire on January 1 on Furnace Lane where we had one firefighter responding to that fire. So as a taxpayer, if I have to pay $125, um, which is what they say will be that medium household um, amount, I think of it as an insurance policy that if I, God forbid, ever do have to call 911, that the police or fire will be able to get there on the roads. <laughs> and when they do come, they will have the staff to do so. So I'm in favor. Thank you. And Mr. Chibuko? Well, I believe that the services that, that the town deserves uh, are needed. And in order to provide the services, according to the department heads, police chief, fire chief, DPW director, uh, we need that those overrides that override money so I am I'm in favor of, of the override and uh, one of the one of the reasons we got there to the override is the, the largest reason reason is is health care and retirement benefits uh, have been going up the costs have been going up and health care is a cost that uh, that just like the private sector you don't have control of it's a national issue it's not a pembroke issue it's a national issue uh health care went up seven percent last year eleven percent the year before uh the mayflower Flower health group wanted to raise it to 17 percent and uh pembroke pushed back on them and they raised it to 11 that that particular year uh and the board of selectmen have raised every union's contribution to 25 percent every every one and that's a negotiate that's that's a negotiation that took took a while to do uh, negotiations between uh, the town and the unions are back and forth so you can't just make it happen it, it has to happen as part of a negotiation but we've worked at it thank you very much and mr. Mastronelli obviously I'm against the override and for several reasons one is that the DPW money that's involved in the override is three hundred thousand dollars we'll fill a bunch of potholes and that'll be the end of it and after that, one year, 300000 There's no more money out of that override will ever go to the DPW. It all goes into the general fund. And what does it do? It gives you more police and more fire. We have a 14% crime rate in Pembroke, one of the lowest in the surrounding communities. If we're overwhelmed at the fire department by the fact that the ambulatory system is overwhelming the fire department to where we have no firemen 
the fire department was originally created to be a fire department, then outsource the ambulatory service. And you will not pay more money for outsource ambulance like you hear because you might pay a higher fee to an independent, but what you don't see in the Pembroke fee is all of the taxes that you pay that go to the fire department for the EMT wages, for the benefits, for the maintenance on the equipment, and all of the above. You'll pay one fee to an outsource. Other communities do it, they do it, and it works efficiently. So I don't think we need more police, I don't think we need more fire, and if we're only gonna give the DPW $300,000 for one year, I'd rather see no override. All right, thank you all very much. So that is gonna conclude the question and answer portion of the debate. Uh, we will now move on to closing remarks. So any final words you'd like the voters to know? You will have three minutes. You do not need to use all three minutes if you do not want to. And uh, Michelle Burt, we're gonna start with you. I want the residents of Pembroke to know that I want to be on the Board of Selectmen because I believe we need a citizen's voice on the board. As a wife, a mother, and a taxpayer, I relate to the voters' challenges and concerns. I can bring a balanced and needed perspective to policy decisions. My votes, voice, and actions will be guided by what is best for Pembroke as a whole. I request your vote on May 12th. And I just wanted to use a few minutes of my time to say uh, goodbye to Lou Stone. You've done a great job. He's here in the audience tonight. You've been a wonderful selectman. And that's it. I request you vote on May 12th. All right. Thank you. Mr. Tribuco. I've been working hard. Uh, for the town of Pembroke for, for a long time now, and uh, I'd like to continue to do so and even ex expand uh, what I have been doing. Uh, I would appreciate your vote on May 12th. Uh, you have two of them. Uh, I ask for one. The second vote, the second vote could go to any one of these. Any one of these folks here would make a, a good selectman. Ben has tremendous experience of the DPW. He'd make a good selectman. Joe Brown is on the advisory committee and he's a fiscal conservative, he would make a good selectman. Michelle has been a previous selectman. She's lived in Pembroke, her whole town. She'd make a good selectman. So you have good choices, and I hope I'm just one of them. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. All right, Mr. Bastianelli, your turn. Um, first of all, I'd like to take a moment to thank my wife, who's present here for her support through all of this. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not an easy character to live with, as you can well imagine. Um, but when you leave here tonight, I want you to understand that a town manager is not what we need. We've had one. It's failed us. We're in a permanent override situation. This override this year is a portion, a tip of the iceberg. It's going to get bigger next year and bigger in the following years. Anybody who watched the selectmen's meeting the other night heard that from advisory. It has no benefit to the community. It has no benefit. It contributes nothing to our fiscal crisis. We're abolishing a DPW for I don't know what reason. I don't think anybody really knows why this is important to abolish the DPW. And if you think it's hard to get information under the current system, when you get to a town manager, you're probably going to get less. And, and we've already discussed the fact that the override money is, is one year for the DPW. It doesn't, the override doesn't benefit anything as well. We need to stop the spending. We need to control the spending. We need to get the budgets under control. Then we need a master plan. We need something to follow. We need a five-year plan. We need a 10-year plan. We talk about planning. We talk about town administrator. We talk about all these wonderful things, all these phrases and terminologies, but nobody does anything with it. No, no one comes forward and says, here's a five-year plan. It might be the worst five-year plan you've ever seen. I've never seen one. And finally, know this, your vote is the single most important and powerful freedom that you have. No one takes your vote. You give your vote. And I want your vote for select. 
Thank you. Thank you. And then to wrap it up, Mr. Brown. Thank you. I want to thank Pembroke Town News and my opponents for the opportunity to discuss the issues that affect our town. Pembroke is a great town to live and raise a family. I'm happy my family was able to move here into town and we've been very warm and welcoming to my family. I'm running for selectman because I want to give a new perspective to the board and find solutions and issues to our town, what our town is facing today and in the future. I want to use my knowledge and experience in government to help our town grow and prosper, asking more from Beacon Hill and Capitol Hill so we can get projects started and accomplished in a timely manner. Obtaining grant money so we can spend free cash on requests, not necessities. And letting the people know that Pembroke is not a blip on the radar going from Hanover or Marshfield. I want to be your selectman because I want to be greedy for the citizens of Pembroke. To be that squeaky wheel that gets things done for our citizens. With your help, and, a, and we'll be able to accomplish many things for the years to come. So don't forget to vote for me, John Brown, on May 12th as your next selectman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the candidates for showing up and answering questions today. Um, on behalf of Pembroke Town News, we very much appreciate you sharing your thoughts with the voters. We will now be taking a five minute recess. Um, at the conclusion of five minutes, we'll be moving on to the town clerk portion of tonight's forum. And again, thank you to all the audience members for showing up. Again, town election is May 12th, Saturday. Uh, you are able to vote for two selectmen on the ballot. So we'll see you in five minutes. <laughs>